Am I the asshole for refusing to help my sister with her kids? I, 23F, come from a family of three kids, 30M, 20F. Despite being in the same city, I rarely see my siblings or parents because they've always ignored my existence during everything. I've been pretty self-sufficient and academically successful so they justify they have nothing to worry about when it comes to me. My younger sister, Mary, had twins a few months ago. Her boyfriend didn't want to be involved in the whole process so it is safe to say she is a single mom. My parents have been helping her raise her kids as they always have. They always supported every decision she made including not going to college, dating whoever she wants and having kids. I'm quite busy with work, school and everything that comes with it. My mother called and asked me if I could watch the kids for a few hours on the weekend so they could take a breath. I said no because I was busy, I had a date planned. I've been dating my girlfriend, 29F, for a few months but no one in the family knows or cares that I'm dating or that I'm into women. My brother has work and his own family with three kids so he himself is busy as my mom said. I said I was sorry and I couldn't help out. My mother told me I was incredibly selfish to not care at all about my niece and nephew and only care about myself and ignore my family. I simply said it was ironic given the fact that I was constantly the one being ignored in the family and I hung up the phone and didn't pick it up afterwards. Should I have helped her out? Not the asshole that was pure manipulation. Your sister being a single mother is difficult. That I understand and it would be nice of you to help her out every now and then. But you have your own life, this was not your decision. You don't need to rearrange your life because of her wanting to have a child. Not the asshole. You are never under obligation to give your time or your energy to anyone unless you choose to. If the children in question were children you chose to give birth to and raise that would be one thing, but they aren't so you don't owe their mother anything, and it isn't selfish to acknowledge that. Not the asshole. Those children are not your responsibility. If they need a break either them or the mother can pay for a sitter for the weekend. Your parents chose to take care of these kids full-time not you. Good luck. So many of these posts about looking after someone else's kids. Someone else electing to have kids to a deadbeat isn't your problem. You can elect to help, but you're not obliged. You had plans already. This wasn't a family emergency. Not the asshole. Not the asshole. Not your kids. If you want to offer your help, you can do so, but you have no obligation to do so since you're working and going to school and living away from everyone. Am I the asshole for announcing at a party that my mom's friend might be interested in me? I, F24, have known my mom's friends Jane, F60, and Joe, M66, since I was a kid. Recently they began to comment that I have never had a boyfriend. To start, Jane said a local shop is hiring, and I should apply because it would be a great place to meet boys. I said thanks, but I'm not looking for a boyfriend. Joe then started saying how I should try to find someone soon before it's too late. I tried to joke it off, saying I don't need a man, and a boyfriend sounded like work. After they left, I told my parents that I didn't like those comments, and they made me uncomfortable. My parents agreed it was strange but said I shouldn't overthink it. They came over again and pushed the discussion of relationships and how I should find a boyfriend. I tried to make a joke, saying I was asked out, but turned it down. My parents seemed surprised. So I told a story about how two different guys asked me out but I turned them down because they made me uncomfortable. Jane said I should at least go on a date with them because I don't know when I'll be asked again. I became angry and told them I would rather be single than date someone who made me feel uncomfortable. Joe disagreed saying it didn't matter, I should have taken the offers. I mentioned again to my parents how uncomfortable I was with these comments, but again, I was told to ignore them. I asked my parents to tell them to stop making comments about my relationships. I saw them again last week. My parents pulled them aside and told them to stop making those comments as they made me uncomfortable, they agreed to stop. Later Joe asked me a question and when I didn't give him the response he wanted, he said he'd ask about my boyfriend later to, set me back to normal, because it's so funny. After, Joe told everyone not to ask about any boyfriend because they, wouldn't want me to get upset again. When Jane and Joe were leaving, they made a comment about me being alone for the rest of my life. The final straw was tonight. My parents had a party, and Jane and Joe came. My parents agreed to remind them of my boundary and that I could leave if needed. The jokes continued. Jane said how sad my life must be and how I will die alone. I started to leave when Joe said Jane was right and it was almost pathetic that I didn't have a boyfriend yet. 
I was tired of them disrespecting my boundaries, so I turned to Joe and very loudly said, I think I finally understand why you and Jane keep bringing up my relationship status. It's because you're interested in me. That must be why you keep disrespecting my boundaries. Well, let me be clear, I am not interested in you, and frankly, it's creepy. You've known me since I was a child. I left after that. From what I've been told, they were embarrassed and left the party early. My best friend thinks I am right, but my parents believe what I said was uncalled for and disturbing. What they said makes me feel disrespected, but maybe I was too harsh. So am I the asshole? Not the asshole why are your parents okay with their friends bullying you? Those people would never be allowed in my life again if they disrespected my child that way. From what I've been told, they were embarrassed. One can't help but think that if you hadn't struck a nerve, they wouldn't have been so embarrassed by your comment. Not the asshole. Not the asshole. You asked them multiple times to respect your boundaries and they didn't. You can only poke the bear so many times. Not the asshole. Normally, something like that would be out of line, but they were told over and over not to make comments like that, how they made you uncomfortable, and frankly, your dating life is none of their business. You had to resort to drastic measures to make them stop, and under the circumstances, I don't blame you at all. Maybe now they will stop sticking their noses into your business and making you uncomfortable. Not the asshole. Why are so many older people like this? Also, you're only 24. What the hell are they even talking about? Good on you for embarrassing them. Be sure to make comments like that to them every single time you see them so they'll know how it feels. I mean, your dating life was so hilarious to them, they should see how funny this is too, right? Am I the asshole for telling my sister she is too heavy and lazy to watch my kid? I have a daughter Rebecca, she is 5 years old now and can be quite a handful at times. I have never had any problems catching up to her if she were to run off. She doesn't really run off anywhere in the first place, she prefer to just sit in area and play with toys. My sister is heavier, probably around 250 pounds, and growing up we didn't have the best relationship. She was 10 years older and she usually saw me as the annoying kid. We started to slowly reconnecting this year, and she got to get to know my kid. Overall I thought it was going great. This week we had Rebecca sleep over her auntie so they could bond more, it was my sister's idea. I came and picked up Rebecca today and she was on a child leash. I was shocked. She was on a leash basically since an hour after we left yesterday at her house. I confronted her about it and she told me Rebecca was too fast to keep up with. That this was the easiest solution. This started an argument and resulted me telling her that she is too heavy and lazy to watch my child. That can't keep up with a kid that like to sit and play with toys so you put her on a leash. She started defending herself more and called me an asshole. I told her she will never be alone or probably seeing Rebecca for a good long time. My mom called and she heard about it, she is on my sister's side. Am I the asshole? Not the asshole. I can see using a child leash in a busy mall, airport etc., when a kid could scamper off quickly. However, in a home? That's borderline abuse. Not the asshole see I never saw a problem with the lead for when hyperactive kids are out with their parents, but again key words being hyperactive and outside. This is just lazy, and an overstep of your trust. Not to mention your daughter is old enough to realize dogs go on leashes, which would probably be jarring for a rather unbothered and calm child. Esh. You are the asshole for saying what you did, yeah. She's the asshole for putting your child on a child leash without permission. If someone put my kid on a leash without asking me they'd never be watching my kid again, but the resulting argument shouldn't dissolve to a point of calling your sister too heavy and lazy to take care of your kid. That seems more like an emotionally fueled personal attack instead of a point made in an argument. Esh. She shouldn't have put your child on a leash, but the way you handled it by insulting and fat shaming her was horrible. Where did she magically produce a child leash from if she has no children? Sounds like she planned ahead for this. I have absolutely used one in appropriate places for safety. There is nothing appropriate about using one indoors with a child who is merely active, not a runner. Did she force her to sleep in it? Not the asshole. Am I the asshole for expecting people to pay their fair share? Every year my wife's family plans a beach trip. We usually require a large house for the almost 30 people that go. For some reason, the cost gets divided by family and not person meaning that my wife and I, who have no kids, pay the same as her sister and brother-in-law, who have themselves and five children. 
Accommodations for this year's trip cost roughly $6,800, which, divided by eight families is about $850. However, if it were divided by person, it would cost my wife and I only about $650. I brought this up to her and she's adamant that this is the way they've always done it so that's the way it is. So, am I the asshole for not wanting to subsidize her sister's $2,300 vacation bill? Edit for clarity. The large families always get their own living space with restroom, meanwhile, wife and I are stuck on an air mattress in someone else's room or living space. Not the asshole. It should be divided by bedroom. Families with kids who need more bedrooms pay more. Those who don't get a bedroom pay less. Much, much less. Honestly, you should start finding your own housing, close to them. We need a effing bedroom, is a perfectly good reason. Edited to include judgment. Not the asshole. I wouldn't argue about the cost, but put the damned kids on air mattresses and you and your wife take a bedroom. Wait, you don't get a bed let alone a room? No way I would agree to go on this vacation for the same cost as families that get their own room with a door to close. Okay saw your comment. Maybe edit your post with that little bit of relevant information. If I am going to be sleeping on air mattress and paying same amount as a family of 6-7, then I will object to the division of expenses too. Not the asshole. A question. Do families get same amount of space or is the space divided based on the number of the family members? Paying that much to sleep on an air mattress is ridiculous. Like in no way is that fair. I don't know what the YTA are thinking. Split by room usage and insist you get a full room with your wife. The children can sleep on the air mattresses. Thank <laughs> you.